Your mobile device is essentially a beacon of non-stop surveillance, sending information to all sorts of parties that you probably don't want. And that is why in today's video, we're going to be looking at some of the best mobile apps to protect your privacy. Let's jump in. Welcome back to another video. My name is Ian Major. I'm an entrepreneur, Bitcoin club, and all around raging capitalist. And today's video really is an extension and builds upon a video I did just the other week where I went into how to install Calyx operating system, which is a privacy based operating system onto your Android device. In my case, it was a Google Pixel 4. But today's video, what we're going to be looking at is using F Droid, which is basically a app store for free and open source software uh, that doesn't do any sort of tracking, uh, which you know the normal Google Play Store very much does. And then I'm gonna be rattling off sort of by category some of the very best FOSS or free and open source software apps that are out there with an eye towards your privacy. So you won't wanna miss a thing. For those returning to the channel, welcome back, my friends. As always, it is great to have you. And for those new to the channel, and I know there are many of you, about 80% of you watching, in fact, are not currently subscribed. So if you like this content, I invite you. What are you doing? Come subscribe and join us in our merry and growing gang in cyberspace. I cover all manner of Bitcoin-related content, uh, but I'm also in 2022 including some of these sort of tangential extensions, i.e. the devices we use uh, to work with you know, Bitcoin related apps very much matter. We're only going to see surveillance continue. And so I'm excited to have you on the journey. Uh, so subscribe if you like any of that. But with all that out of the way, let's jump in first and go through how to get F-Droid, which will be our portal to this world of FOSS. All right, so hopefully the motivation here is pretty clear. Again, surveillance is higher than ever, and it's only going to increase. It has to increase for a variety uh, of geopolitical and kind of macroeconomic uh, factors that I could do a whole uh, additional video on. But, you know, I'm assuming that you watching this video uh, have seen it with your own eyes and you sort of know what is uh, what is happening. And so again, in the last video I did in this sort of topic or series, I went through the full gory details step by step of how to flash the Calyx operating system onto a Google Pixel device. And so now I just want to go through, uh, well, now that you've done all that, what are some of the great apps that you can uh, install and use and be confident that your privacy is in your control? So the gateway to all of that is something called F-Droid. And this is really, again, a open source app store um, that doesn't track what it is that you're downloading or installing, which the Google Play Store very much does. Uh, and this includes the sort of required packages that you would need to install all sorts of mobile apps. And the library continues to grow and grow and grow, which is fantastic. All right. And so for those who are following along from the prior video, this will look familiar. This is exactly where we kind of left off after we had flashed the Calyx operating system. Again, I have F-Droid here uh, on my phone. But if you don't, you can go to f-droid.org. Uh, um, but you'll notice that once you open it up, and the first time you open it up, um, it may take some time to kind of load the different repositories that are in there. Um, but basically, you know, you'll see it's it's got this latest, you know, latest apps. You can look at different categories. Uh, as you can see at the top, it says updating repositories. So you'll, you'll notice it does that uh, from time to time. Um, and you can come over and search for different uh, apps that you may want to download. So let's take something like uh, Briar. And again, I'll go through some of these um, in just a moment, but Briar is a communication uh, messaging app. So secure private messaging, really, I think best of the best of the best when it comes to uh, privacy focused messaging. And so I can click this and uh, install it. Right, and so this will look very similar to basically any uh, kind of app. I've got it now, I can uninstall it, and F-Droid will essentially help pull in updates to the app just as a normal app store would do. So that's great. 
Now, you will find that other apps are not necessarily immediately accessible uh, directly through F-Droid. And what you basically may need to do is to add a F-Droid repository to allow you to then access the uh, ongoing kind of updates for the app. A great example of this could be something like Bromite. So Bromite is a privacy-focused browser. Um, you know, this would be a, you know pretty on, on par with like something like the Tor browser. And so for this, I would actually go over to bromite.org slash fdroid, which I'm flashing up here, uh, and you can, you can sort of see the instructions. Um, and so what I'm going to do is pop back over to my fdroid, and I'm going to go over to settings, and I'm going to click on repositories. And so I can add additional repositories such as the uh, Bromite one. So I can say Fdroid. Uh, now it does have a fingerprint. I'm gonna um, I'm gonna not put that in for now. But let's go ahead and hit Add. Uh, you can see it's unsigned. Because and now when I search for it, I can see that I have indeed the app. So just keep that in mind. Like if there's, you know, if you're searching for something and you don't see it immediately, it's probably because you just need to add the repository through that menu we were just looking at. Uh, and so Bromide is basically a fork of Chromium, so it's, you know, kind of an even more privacy-focused um, browser option than Chromium. Uh, and again, I can install that and pull in updates on an ongoing basis now that I have that repository pointed. Uh, to the proper location. So that's how you get these apps installed. And now basically what I wanna do is just run through some of the different uh, categories and call out some of the favorite apps that I have within those. All right, so now that we've got that done with uh, F-Droid and being able to install apps either, you know, just simply searching in F-Droid or bringing the repository in, and now just kind of rattle off some of the best of the best in different categories of apps. Uh, and these are going to really help you take your privacy to the next level if you don't already have some of these. First, I do want to point out this absolutely excellent, this is by far the most exhaustive uh, categorization and rundown of free and open source Android apps by none other than X21, uh, whose Twitter account appears to have been uh, either deleted or probably more likely uh, banned. And so uh, pour one out for X21. Um, but he's made this absolutely excellent set of resources. There's a ton of different Bitcoin stuff on this uh, on his main x21.tools website. And I am specifically on the uh, FOSS section for mobile apps. And so you'll see here, I mean, it is just a ton of different options uh, for all sorts of different tools. So this is an absolutely fantastic resource. Um, and so what I really wanna do is just kind of go through a bit of a subset uh, and also bring in some you know, other experience and other sources uh, and we'll go down kind of category by category and I'll just list out some of my uh, top picks. So in terms of a browser, I think it really has to be either Bromite or uh, the Tor browser. And Bromite is essentially a fork of Chromium that has you know, no ad tracking of any kind or, or anything. Uh, and so those are probably your picks for a browser. Now, in terms of a proxy, you have something like Orbot. So Orbot is essentially going to help pass other data, so not necessarily in your browser, but other data, maybe from you know wherever, through Tor. And so that is a broader proxy that lets you pass data traffic through Tor. So that is a very nice accompaniment, uh, regardless of what you do with the browser. The next one up is a VPN. Now, Calyx does offer a free VPN uh, as part of the setup, uh, which you could certainly stick with, but I do think the performance is probably not going to be as good as some of the other options that we will now discuss. Uh, one fantastic option is Molvad VPN. Now this is a uh, paid option uh, and you can pay in Bitcoin, you know, so you can do this extremely privately, uh, but Molvad is one that is paid. And then you also have the uh, Proton VPN, which is a free option, uh, but you can also, for a lot of these, you have like premium kind of add-ons. So they may start with a free basic model uh, but you can always kind of add on top of it. A lot of people just don't realize that even, you know, like a VPN is supposed to be 
you know, for privacy, but some of the really well-known ones like Nord, uh, ExpressVPN, I mean, these collect information on you even as you're using it. Next category up is two-factor authentication. So this is of course needed more and more these days. Uh, and a great tool for you there is and OTP. So pretty simple stuff, you know, operates just as you're familiar with other uh, authenticators. Uh, but and OTP, I think is the best of the best In terms of password managers, right? I mean, just think about like, if you're using Chrome all day, you know, how many passwords are stored within Chrome. Uh, and so a good password manager uh, that respects your privacy is, is key. Uh, Bitwarden is certainly, I think, where's the crown in this category. Uh, there is again, a free tier option, and then you can, you know, pay for additional premium services if you wish. But again, Bitwarden, I think, gets the award in this one. In terms of email and calendar, my pick would probably go to ProtonMail uh, and then the accompanying uh, Proton Calendar app, which goes along with that, uh, both mobile apps now. So again, I, I don't think you can do too much better than that. Next one up is, of course, messaging. So messaging here has a number of options. I think Briar is kind of the top of the top of the top. Uh, but there's certainly other good options, particularly that you'll see in um, X21's kind of list. Uh, a lot of people will also say, you know, Signal, uh, but I don't actually think that is available in F-Droid, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and in fact, I think Signal's developers have even come out and explicitly said, like, we prefer, you know, the Google Play Store as the distribution method. So there's some weird, I think, bad blood between those two groups. Um, so again, Signal, not really a, a sort of applicable option here, but I think in general, like is of course a very good uh, app in its own right. Um, video conferencing, right? I mean, like this is something, you know, a lot of us do more and more these days. Uh, Jitsi Meet is absolutely the pick here. Uh, and probably the only pick. And then of course, last but not least are our different Bitcoin apps. And so I'm excited to do further deep dives on the following two. I think in terms of an overall Bitcoin wallet, Samurai wallet has to be the pick. Uh, this is not necessarily through um, F-Droid, but it's one we will look at on our de-Googled uh, Pixel device. I'm probably gonna do that in the next week or two, uh, as well as Zeus for a Lightning wallet. So those are probably the two recommendations there in terms of Bitcoin. Uh, and then again, there's a whole host of others. Like for example, depending on what you're using your de-Googled device for, like you could just be using it for a select set of these applications, or you could be using it as your actual kind of real phone. And if that's the case, you probably need to think about things like maps, right? And there are options for you there. Uh, that don't you know track your location and information um, like Google Maps would. Uh, there's different clients to access content within things like Twitter and YouTube. So if you want to watch YouTube uh, videos, but you don't want to be you know tracked by YouTube for what you're watching and Google but for what you're watching, uh, there are clients uh, for being able to do that as well. So again, I invite you to take a look through X21's full list. I'm sure you'll find things outside of what I've covered. But what I tried to do in this list is at least go through some of the big, big categories uh, that you'll want to be thinking about. With all that said, let's go ahead and conclude today's video. All right, my friends, there you have it. So again, a little bit of a different video today relative to the kind of all things Bitcoin mantra that we're usually covering. But again, I think the devices we use and the supporting apps we use are very much important in terms of becoming a self-sovereign individual. Part of sovereignty is, of course, control and ownership over what you own your assets, your money. But I also think privacy plays a very central role in becoming self-sovereign. And so I think these topics are really important. Uh, what I hope I've achieved in this video is even if you're never gonna go kind of full blown into uh, this world of you know getting a, a Pixel phone and de-Googling it with Calyx and going through kind of the Loctite uh, set of apps that really will make you squeaky clean in terms of privacy. Like even if you're not gonna do any of that, uh, I hope you'll at least consider doing some of it and taking incremental steps towards improving your privacy setup because I think it's gonna become more and more important. And so I hope you found this valuable and useful. If you did, my friends, you already know what to do. Give this video a like. I'm curious to hear your thoughts. What are, what are your favorite apps? You know, What did I not cover that you think uh, are crucial additions to any kind of sovereign uh, and privacy-minded toolkit. I'm keen to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. And of course, if you have any questions as well, but for now, we'll go ahead and leave this here. 
As a reminder, my friends, every sack counts. And until next time, I'll see you then.